Okay, we're back live in Los Angeles, California, where the Cube is here on the ground doing our first Dave inaugural Cube around ServicesAngle.com. So, for the folks out there who don't know, ServicesAngle.com is a new vertical publication that uh, Wikibon and Silicon Angle launched eight months ago. Kind of ridiculed for doing it, but now, Dave, people we're looking like geniuses now. Um, it's, We've it's been hot, talking about it for over a year. How it's much a we hot love sector. services? And, uh, services is changing. We're here. HP is announcing uh, with, with this Cube press event a new revolution in their portfolio of always-on support, and uh, we're going to bring in what's being talked about earlier in this morning. They have a lot of experts. So Seamus Dunn is with us. Uh, Seamus Dunn is the vice president of HP Technology Services, um, and he is coming to us live on Skype from Dublin. Seamus, can you hear us? I can hear you just fine. Well, thanks very much for making time. I know it's a little late in the evening there, and, uh, but we're really excited about the, the new offerings. We've been talking all morning, Seamus, about how cloud and virtualization and convergence have really changed the, the infrastructure of IT, and it's, now it's time for services to respond and, and actually it provide some proactive capabilities uh, that are cloud-like. And uh, I wonder if we could start there. Is that what you're doing? And talk about the impetus for what you guys are doing in this area. Okay, Seamus, can you hear us? Um, I can right now, but I can't hear uh, Dave. Okay, let me, Dave's had a little audio problem. So, Seamus, I'll ask you. So, w welcome to the Cube from Ireland. This is our first time we've ever done a global uh, guest live on the Cube. So, uh, the question for you is: I want to hear about your view about the always-on portfolio um, and some of the customers that and you're working with. So, tell us as an, as the expert out there, what you're hearing out there around data centers, some of the challenges that you're hearing, and what's these new support. Uh, products do for your customers? Um, Dave, uh, John, uh, thanks for that question. That's a great lead, lead in to data center care. So uh, the first thing you have to say about data center care is it's obviously support at the data center level. You heard Flynn and you'll hear some folks talk later about our three other offers, proactive care and foundation care and uh, life cycle event services where, a lot, where, where it's a lot about attaching support to the the system, the device, or the appliance. Data center care is about building support around your whole data center and environment. So you have to start by answering the question you just asked. So IT is changing, we know that. So how is it changing? Um, the first way we describe in HP the way it's changing is to talk about converged infrastructure. And I know that people have talked about that a lot already. Um, but the characteristics of the convergence in the data center are that it's virtualized, so you're building virtualized virtualized environments. You're talking about virtual world and physical machines. It's orchestrated, it's modular, it's open, there's no vendor lock-ins, there's a lot of multi-vendor software and harder, hardware. It's resilient, there's some redundancy built in. So it's got all of those type of characteristics and that's the modern data center. And also we're finding that most customers are on some sort of journey from their traditional environments. They're on a journey where they're perhaps standardizing, perhaps they're moving further along and they're automating and they're, they're virtualizing their environment, they're probably developing a self-service type of environment. They're experimenting with bursting public cloud service providers and you know the other terminology I heard you use with Scott earlier. And ultimately some are getting ready to really take on the CIO as a broker. Um, so when you consider all of those type of environments, the problems that they have are very different. So first of all, um, HP already has an industry leading mission critical support business where a lot of what we do is we guarantee you stability and uptime of your equipment. Um, that, that proposition is less relevant in the data centers that customers are building out now that I just described and as they move to a convergence of infrastructure you know, and make this journey to the CIO becoming a service broker. It's really about, they're, what they're really doing is they're, they're, they're trying to develop business agility around their, their environment. Some CIOs, some, some CXOs actually talk about IT as a profit center. For some IT is their business completely. It's not a cost center. So the needs are very different and they're looking for business agility with their IT environment. And they're also looking for cost effectiveness and a return on, on that environment. And it's multi-sourced. They want a lot of choice about what they do with it and it's very multi-sourced. Multi-sourced in every dimension the way they purchase their infrastructure and software, um, the way they use it, who they get it from. Um, 
it's very multi-sourced. Some of it is on-premise, some of it's off-premise. So there's a lot of uh, complexity is the price of some of this business agility that they're driving, and it's very hard to support. And we're just, we've been discovering that the hard way, um, to, to, to be frank. Uh, we started, for example, a number of years ago with hyperscale customers, some well-known household names, <clears throat> particularly on the West Coast and in China, also in Europe. Um, and they had such specific needs. They were buying gear from us in the tens of thousands at a go. And our support models just didn't scale. Um, you, you can't attach support to that many devices and expect it to scale, either from the experience you're going to get for support or from the pricing of it. It just didn't didn't make sense. Even enterprises, as they were building out their environments or making whatever type of journey they were making, you know, it didn't scale and their needs, the needs that we could give didn't didn't work too well um, in, in terms of our traditional support models. And we didn't think really that there's anybody in the industry who's been doing this well. Um, so, so what we've we've figured um, and what we learned the hard way is it's just simply not easy to put a support agreement together. Turns out it's it's quite difficult to put a support Sh- agreement Sh- together for this complex environment. Seamus, um, back, Seamus, if I can just jump in for a sec because I want to sure, ask you, I want to drill down on that. So, you know, we've heard from uh, Scott about evolving and getting back to the operational side of the data centers. So, yes, we see the top line as a key driver for CIOs being service brokers, but still the cost side of the equation is still relevant. As the new sea change of technologies um, with the blades, we saw Gen 8, some of those um, technologies, billions of dollars of R&D in there, but more importantly, energy. I mean, this is a huge multivariable equation around cost. At the same time, the change in technology. So you talked about virtualization. Energy is a big problem as well. Can you talk about all those factors and what it means to this whole data center care thing? I mean, how how relevant and how reliable is, is that? Yeah, for sure, with the, the way um, data centers are scaling out, energy is becoming more and more efficient. Um, so we work very closely with the ESSN organization, which I'm sure you know, um, the, the, um, the, the product divisions in ESSN, and they're building ever more energy efficient devices. Now, where we can bring that to bear is how we introduce them and deploy them. The very good example is the Ecopod, um, is a PUE ratio of one point Oh, you know, I won't quote the number. I might, I might get it wrong, but it's incredibly, it's incredibly. You might low. get in trouble by PR people, but that's okay. Quote it. <laughs> guess. Okay, we'll, we'll take a guess in a minute. You know, <laughs> the um, but so 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 first of all, building energy efficient devices. Now, what we can bring the evolve part of data center care is as you put your environment together and we help you with that, you're going to still be on a journey. There, there's there's an evolution that has to occur. So we'll build in a number of our life cycle services in there to help work with you to make that environment more efficient in general, but including energy efficiency. Now we, we do, we do a data center care, at least for now, really think about it as an infrastructure support model for your data center. We'll help you with SLAs as you go to service providers. We've tend not so far to think of it as a facilities um, uh, a support model, at least not yet. Um, but we will help with how that infrastructure goes together and operates well from a, an efficiency point of view in general, including okay. energy efficiency. So, okay, so my next question is, we've talked with Prith Banerjee going way back to 2009 and recently at HP Discover, and uh, it seems to be playing out with Gen 8 and Moonshot and some other products, is this notion of a data center operating system, an area that we're covering on Silicon Angle and on services angle, when you start getting into hyperscale uh, data centers, you know, besides energy, there's all these other factors, multi-vendor components, flash memory, um, different kinds of services, you got infrastructure service. So you have kind of a, a, a hybrid or managed environment now that's the data center. So software's tying us all together. How do you guys fit into that care model? And you guys, you know, deploying those kinds of uh, paradigms and methodologies, or is that still too far out? Well, the, the, the hyperscale customers are a unique segment. I mean, just as you said, you, you obviously know about our, our Moonshot program. We're going to revolutionize the the, the, the the servers and infrastructure that go into the hyperscale customers. The, the hyperscale data centers in general are very technically savvy folks. And there's a lot of difference in the software stack for those groups. Uh, you've probably heard about things like Hadoop and the database management system, how they deal with unstructured and big data explosions. Um, so we're really, for now, focusing, at least with the hyperscale group, on the infrastructure layer 
and the OS layer, um, you know, and some tools. Um, really, the hyperscale customers are tending to build out and drive the, the software stack up to the database management, you know, themselves. So we're staying engaged and involved. We're working with a lot of different software vendors, but that's not in the hyperscale space where we see the real value of data center care in, in the short term. Data center care in the short term will really be t looking after the data center at the infrastructure layer and taking the need for the, uh, you know, the hyperscale uh, 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 customers to have to worry about that and think more about how they're going to deal with this explosion of data that they're managing. Seamus, uh, this is Dave Vellante. Can, can you, you hear me okay? I, yes, I can hear you just fine now. Great, so um, I wanted to go back to this notion. You said that you had a number of uh, hyperscale, early hyperscale customers in California, Europe, and, and also China. Um, and it's a little forward thinking, but have they started to talk to you about different pricing models, um, maybe okay. serv service as a service, if you will, um, just changing the way, maybe consuming services differently, maybe by the drink. Can you talk about that a little bit? They, well, you know, you know they, they, they've talked to us about pricing in, in, a, in a lot of different ways. I mean, the, you know, the, some of the, the, the hyperscale groups, and, and then actually we think about it in three tiers. There, there is the, the giants um, who, who I'm sure you could list their names off um, yourself without me speaking to. Um, and, you know, and then there's a mid-tier, and then there's a kind of a smaller tier. And each tier has slightly different needs. But I can tell you that over the last number of years, we've talked a lot about pricing models. And you know, really when, when, when people say more efficient support, better support, a lot about that is, is changing the cost model for how we deliver that support and, and passing some of that benefit on. Um, so we've done, you know, we've done a number of things that are really it's not so much pricing models. In fact, it's almost unique to every customer. It's so different with every customer in this service provider hyperscale space or this high performance computing space. Um, it, it's a, the pricing approach has had to be very unique with them. They're very, very big deals. They buy a lot. But, but, but one underlying trend is they want very little service, very little basic service. You know, if it goes down, take it out, put a new one in, manage by parts. They want supply chain innovation innovate in our supply chain and our parts management in a way that just makes it v extremely cheap at their scale. And we've done a lot of that, automated on-site parts management, self-service parts management. We've done a lot of supply chain innovation to take that level of cost structure out and, and hand that over to the, to, the, to the customer. However, when they have an issue, they want, and, and the, the, the hyperscale customers wouldn't articulate it quite this way, but essentially to us, they want mission critical support the best people we got right away, immediately, no delay, get us through. We want one number. We don't want questions about which box it was. So we've had to put a, a, a specific model where we give very thin layers of basic support, very, very heavy layers of, 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 of strong mission critical call handling support, our, our best engineers out on site as fast as they can, um, and manage that in a custom way so it's priced that makes sense for them at their scale. And that's what we've meant by learning a lot from hyperscale. It turns out it's not easy to take all the different things you can do across all the infrastructure elements you've got and put it together in one deal at a price that works for a big customer like that. And we've spent a couple of years learning the hard way how to do that properly. So, does that answer what you're looking yes, for, Dave? Yes, it does, thank you. I had another follow-up. Um, can you talk about the data center movement in Ireland, um, what firms are doing, moving there with their larger data centers. Um, you mentioned, you know, the the, the pod uh, with with uh, I think it's a 1.1 or 1.2 PUE. What's happening with the data center movement in Ireland locally? There's there's a couple of things that I can say from my perspective of being in Ireland. So so first, you should know that I just came back <clears throat> from living in Houston for almost three years, um, working with our our server division in in, in Houston. Uh, learned a lot about Gen 8, <clears throat> traveled around with uh, a lot of the customers on the West Coast. Coming back to Ireland has been an interesting experience. And the first thing I have to say is we do data center care right. I can't see who can compete with us. And, and I mean that seriously, and here's why. Because you not only have to take all of the capabilities that you have together, but you have to be global. So in Ireland, we're finding that there are massive data centers disproportionate to the size of the country. And, and in fact, we're seeing it in Scandinavia too also, where there's a huge build out of data centers, 
Um, and there, there, there are a lot from companies arriving, particularly from the, the US and the Americas, but, but also actually from, from Asia. And um, there, there, there's a multitude of different types, but large hyperscale style data centers have to go global and they're choosing places like Ireland to, to do it in. And the same services needs exist here as existed in, in, in the West Coast. And you know, how do they get the same pricing? How do they get the same entitlement? You know, how do we put the same deal together for a customer in Europe that they just had when they were in California or Texas or wherever else? Um, so so you know, the, 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 the movement, the data center movement, if you like, is the same here as it is elsewhere. Uh, the interesting thing to see is just how global the the um, the nature of, of the data center revolution has become. Well, Seamus, thank you very much for staying up with us. I know it's late there. It was great to have you on the Cube. Uh, welcome back home, <laughs> and uh, looking forward to uh, future interactions with you. Seamus Dunn, everybody. Yeah, Seamus, thanks so thank much. You, we're we're going to have you on the Cube again in Boston and in Palo Alto when we do our shows. Uh, we'd like to tap tap you as our data center uh, Irish uh, connection, if that's cool with you. <laughs> more than happy to do it. Okay. Thank you very Thank much, you. Uh, Seamus. And uh, we'll be right back uh, with more great content here in, in, in L.A. Um, with ServicesAngle.com, our, our first CUBE event for ServicesAngle.com. ServicesAngle.com is our reference point for innovation around services, the disruption of services. And Alex Williams is the managing editor of Services Angle. It's growing, it's changing, we're excited. HP supporting us. We endorse them, they endorse us, so we're real excited. We'll be right back with more great content.